Hello and welcome back to The Road to Good Cooking. If this is your first time here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Now you want to know what I did over the weekend? I smoked my very first corned beef brisket and it turned out absolutely to die for delicious. Let me show you how I made my very first smoked corned beef brisket. My local grocery store had corned beef briskets on sale this past weekend and the price was right. And so what I ended up doing, I bought a small brisket and I thought this would be a good time for me to smoke a brisket. And I didn't want to buy a great big one in case I didn't like it or in case I ruined it. So what I'm going to do is put it in this bowl here, fill the bowl up with ice cold water and put it in the fridge. And I'm going to let it soak to try to get some of that salty solution off of it. At the end of two hours, I'm going to take my brisket out of this water, cut a little piece off, and then fry it up and taste it. And if it still tastes really salty, I'm going to um, pour this water out and then replace it with some nice fresh water and continue soaking for another two hours. Here's my brisket after a four hour soak in the cold water. I took it out of the cold water, patted it dry, and I'm ready for the next step. Now I'm going to spread some spicy brown mustard on my dried um, corned beef brisket and what this is going to do, this is going to help the seasoning stick to the meat. Now I ran across this uh, method uh, at, on one of my uh, smoking forums that I belong to and when I saw them do this I thought this makes perfect sense to soak a corned beef brisket to get some of that salt out because the one thing I don't like about corned beef is that it is extremely salty for me so when I ran across this method I thought I am all over this and soaking it made such a huge difference and for my corned beef, I'm going to be using a seasoning from It's Incredible called Texas Best Rib Rub. And it's good on beef ribs. It's good on pork ribs. I love it on all kinds of ribs. And I know it's going to be good on this corned beef. So I'm going to gently and not quite liberally sprinkle it on here because this meat is seasoned enough. And um, this is just going, to add, just going to enhance the beautiful flavor of this corned beef. So I'm going to pat it, pat it in here and let it sit for a minute and then flip it over and repeat the process. And this is some fantastic seasoning. It's incredible by Heaven Made Products. And I've tried all of their products and they're absolutely phenomenal. I got my brisket flipped over and I'm going to repeat the process with the mustard and with the seasoning. And what I forgot to mention is that I'm going to put the link to the Heaven Made product, It's Incredible Products, in the description box below. And um, try this Texas Best Rib Rub and try all of his seasonings. They are absolutely amazing. And his name is Michael Petrie, is the owner. Tell him Josie sent you. Now I want to make sure I get it all around the edges and all the little nooks and crannies of this corned beef. Well, this is going to be so good. I can, I can just taste it already. My corned beef is all seasoned up. I'm going to let it sit here and rest while I prepare my smoker. I transferred my brisket to a smaller pan and I probed it so that way I can keep up with the internal temperature. I love using my Inkbird probe. It has a, um, a app that you download to your cell phone and that way it'll tell you what your temperature of your meat is or whatever you're cooking and it show, displays right there on your phone. It's the same temperature that's displaying on the unit itself. This unit comes with four probes so I can have up to four different meats on here and keep an eye on the internal temperature. Now for this cook I'm not going to be worrying about the cooking time but I will be keeping a close eye on my internal temperature. For this cook, I'm going to use my little tiny electric master built smoker. Isn't it cute? Perfect for this little job. The next time I smoke brisket, I'm going to buy a bigger one and I'm going to smoke it in one of my pit barrel cookers. And I cannot wait. Here's the bottom pan of my little smoker and I added a few pecan pellets in it. And I don't want to generate a whole lot of smoke, just enough smoke to uh, flavor that little tiny brisket. And here's the second layer. This is the water pan and I have a little bit of water in here and that big chunk there is uh, some frozen juice. Anytime I have juice that's going left on me, I always freeze it and then I use it for this purpose. I added the grate on the top. Now it is ready to go outside and then it will be time to get my smoke on. 
my little girl is all set up and ready to go. I didn't add, add any liquid to the pan because the brisket is going to create its own natural juices. I have the smoker temperature set for 240 and I'm looking for an internal temperature of 190 to 200 for my brisket. I got the lid on and now it's time for my little girl to put in the work. I took the Inkbird unit which has a magnet on the back of it and I attached it to the leg of the smoker and I'm going to go in the house. I got my phone sitting next to me so I can keep up with the internal temperature of my brisket. I got my libation sitting next to me. I got my cushion ready to prop my feet up and I'm good to go. I forgot to mention once my brisket reaches an internal temperature of about 160 degrees I'm going to cover my pan with heavy duty aluminum foil and by then it should be enough juices in the pan to allow my brisket to braise and this will help tenderize the meat even further. So it's going to be good and juicy and tender. Ooh, I can't wait. Let me recap one thing. I love that whole soaking process because it did take away a lot of that salty flavor, but it left that beautiful corned beef flavor that I love. I just don't like the salt. Now that's the good news. The bad news is that after I wrapped it, I went back in the house and I thought I was going to finish watching my movie, but I ended up falling asleep. And what woke me up was my ink bird timer telling me that it had reached its internal temperature of 200 degrees. So I went out and I took it off the smoker and I don't have a lot of in between pictures to show you guys after that. But, um, I promise I'm going to redo, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to buy me a bigger brisket and use one of my pit barrel cookers and put a lot more smoke on it and just, you know, take the whole, do the whole thing all over again. And I'm going to watch it this time and I will do step by step. I promise. <laughs> I promise for real. I promise. Okay. So let me show you the finished product. I'm going to be using my pit barrel knife set that I got for Christmas from my buddies over at pit barrel cooker and look at how this thing slices. It slices like butter and it is so tender. It's juicy. I don't know if you can see how juicy it is from the picture here, but it, it really is very, very juicy. And, um, I'm going to taste it here in just a second. And I know it's going to be as good as it, it looks. Now, what I would have done had I not fallen asleep, I would have unwrapped it about the last hour of the cook. And so it can get a little bit darker on the top, but it doesn't matter to me because it's going to go on a sandwich anyway. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to do that pull test and check this out. Ooh, look at that. Oh, oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And I did taste it and it is absolutely amazing. It's, it's so good. I, I just can't even believe that I have been boiling my brisket all these years. And I tell you what, after using this method, I will never boil or slow cook another brisket ever, ever, ever. I'm going to smoke it from this point forward. After I tasted it, I realized that I want to add a lot more smoke to it. So I know that cooking it on the pit barrel is going to give me that flavor that I'm looking for. And I'm not going to worry so much. Oh, and I know it's probably going to give it a different color on the top also because I'm going to use a lot more smoke on it. And that's just going to enhance the flavor. And look at how this bad boy is slicing. This is food porn right here. I'm going to have to put on some music on this one because this is some, this is some serious food porn right here. Okay. Wasn't that fun? Now here is the end piece and I suppose you guys want to taste a little bit, right? Now I'm going to make me a sandwich and my sandwich is going to look just like this. So sit back and enjoy.
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and share my channel with everyone you know in the universe. Thank you so much for stopping by. Be blessed and keep on cooking.